Good evening and welcome to everyone. I'm Linda Listella and team leader for Public Art. I'd like to thank Mariachi Restaurant, our host this evening for having us, and to thank the MDA leadership, Eric Berger and Isaac Kramer for their support. I'd like to introduce the Public Art team, Laura Griffith, Eileen Doyle, Jeannie Coogan, Beryl Coblin, Lorraine Lister, Sharon Atkins, and Cody Grabe, our liaison with the Metuchen Arts Council, which is an extremely important uh, relationship. Um, I most especially thank all of you who are here tonight with us to come out on a Thursday evening to show your interest and support in public art in Metuchen. So, let's begin. Over the last decade, Metuchen is no stranger to public art. We have not used that term, but nonetheless, we've been engaged with it. All of the Art Fest sculptures, what happy memories, have been public art that we have waited for, had lots of anticipation around, and used as an opportunity for photos, selfies, groups, and then most of them were temporary, and so they disappeared. In this instance of public art, one artist was invited to use his or her skill to embody what the art fest signified and then create out of that particular approach. And remember those sheep, what a cool idea. And yes, a great example of public art where the community was invited to help make the art and then place them randomly around town. What fun. And finally, the community mural, that four year project that involved over 300 people. And this, an example that combines both of the previous ones, artists designed, but with creative input from many individuals into an integral whole. But now we come to the MDA-sponsored public art. Those earlier projects were simply reflective of our enthusiastic engagement in the arts, a desire to express that we are truly an art-centric community, even as this, this large group gathered here tonight indicates. But now we are growing up. And what we are now positioned to do is to bring public art as a formal entity into our town. Metuchen has growing pains. The town's involvement in all of those previous events and engagements in the arts can be likened to elementary and high school in the life of an individual. Lots of fun, authentic for that point in life, but now we're on the cusp of transitioning into adulthood, and it's hard. It's sad to leave the simple joys behind, and perhaps there can be ways we can touch back to those. I do believe it will be important to retain the spirit of what those earlier pieces of public art brought us. Having experienced those, we have experienced something deep in the heart of what public art is actually all about. Historically, Public art was not always, but often, a way to promote power. And who were the power people? The state and the church. Michelangelo's David, all those generals on horseback, those Roman senators, saints, popes, all of that is what formed public art at the outset. You know, don't these guys just put the fear of God in you? These. These sculptures were from somewhere in Bohemia, and you get the sense that they are Vikings on horseback. Today, however, that is not so much. Public art is genuinely public, meant to do what most art is really about. Its purpose is primarily to be enjoyed, to make people think, and as a way to beautify or express a community value. But when it comes to doing that in public, for the public, it gets very tricky. 
In the Mirror article, I mentioned the sculpture by George Siegel, Gay Liberation, that's in New York's Christopher Park. It took 13 years and $100,000 to have that sculpture installed. It has been there now for over 20 years and is a celebrated part of that community. What's more, a, a similar sculpture group is at Stanford University. Now, early in its, in its life there, it was damaged. It was, it, it was terribly taken, care, taken down. Um, and when it was removed for re redoing, it was so much a part of student life there that students took turns holding place for that, sitting in that position and standing in that position. It tells you a lot about the role of that particular piece of art in that community. Public art should not merely be just another thing put into the environment. Ideally, it will instill meaning and a greater sense of identity and understanding about the places we live and work and visit. I point to the new wayfinding signs as a great example of that. And yes, they are pieces of public art. Anyone entering the borough sees clearly what we are about. There is a beauty and an elegance to them that truly bespeaks us. It was a three-year process of engaging disparate groups within the community, discussions with professional designers, reviews of varied concepts. Creating good public art is not a quick activity. Building trust, cohesion, and a sense of community pride is the first work of public art. Sessions like these, education about public art, the process, the artists who are engaged with the community are all essential to making public art really resonate within a community. In a certain sense, public art recreates a community, humanizes a landscape, and is an indicator of culture. That famous Picasso sculpture in the heart of Chicago is an iconic example of the way public art can change perceptions and change really a whole community. When this piece was installed in the 1960s, it was derided, scorned, and called every derogatory name. Today, most Chicagoans admit the city would not be itself without the work. Did the people change? Did the sculpture itself change their vision? They allowed it to remain and work on their vision. And this was a piece of writing in a newspaper um, in the 60s, immediately after it had been unveiled. When it comes to raising a memorial on the plaza of our new civic center for all the world to see what is of most importance to the hog butcher of the world, what is selected? Picasso's dog. The most shocking aspect of the whole thing is that with all the really fine and nationally known art talent native to and resident in Chicago, it was found necessary to go to an artist halfway around the world who has never seen Chicago and is a notorious communist to boot. So there you go, you know, this writer hit on most of the issues, many of the issues that we find um, around pu public art today. Uh, he could have been standing on corners in Metuchen uh, in, the, in the recent months. And there's the image. And now a, a piece of commentary about the work that was written very recently. Pablo Picasso once said that art washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life. I don't know for sure whether the 50-foot sculpture at the corner of Dearborn and Washington is a soul washer, but it has, I think, been a good thing for the soul of this great city. Now, that was a group of 
a, a whole city, a massive city, um, that was willing to keep the work and engage around it. This is another example with a very different outcome. And so there's precedent for a major work by a major artist to not be allowed to remain on site. In 1989, Richard Serra's Tilted Ark was removed from the Federal Plaza in Lower Manhattan after lengthy hearings about the work. So yes, if the public is willing to undertake the formal procedures for removing a work, there is a process for that. And this from an essay reflecting on, on what happened. Uh, the Tilted Ark was built to stand at 3.7 meters high, spanning 38 meters long, with the unique feature of the lean to one side. Richard Serra's work is powerful. All of his work is powerful. This one was tremendously powerful. And this next sentence is what I see as key in this article. It would have, it, the art, the, um, the arc, the piece of work, would have been a permanent addition to this busy part of the city had the administration taken time to prepare the people before its arrival. That is key to public art, that engagement with the community. And this follows. To the office workers, the artwork appeared to them as ugly and oppressive, an obstacle which had the potential to catch graffiti. Outright protests began to have it pulled down or transferred when two petitions garnered a total of 1,300 signatures. Um, the GSA, the group that had commissioned the work, thought it was still good for that particular area and stood by their decision, saying 1,300 signatures against a local population of 10,000 were not enough to influence their decision. Now, when they had the actual hearing, 122 speakers were in favor of keeping the ark, while slightly over 50 were against it. And even Sarah sued the court. Despite all of that, it was passed that the ark would be destroyed and Sarah could have the remains. The ark artwork was removed in 1989, taken from the ground and cut into three pieces. Um, that space, which is a huge space, um, was redesigned um, basically with landscape architectural components. And this is a photograph of what that looks like today. Um, you see there's seating, um, it's much more welcoming. Um, it has a very different vibe. Was Sarah's work powerful? Absolutely. Did the community feel this was a better use of the space? They did. Now, the public art team up to this point has been without an actual leader. We've rather stumbled long. What was accomplished in the past two years that was of great structural value to the group was engaging a professional in the field to help write a policy manual for public art in Metuchen. In keeping with best practices as outlined by the national group Americans for the Arts, it presents an outline for developing public art in the borough. Beginning this year, we are a new strong team with a very clear vision of what we hope to accomplish and how we hope to accomplish it. Now, is it a major coup that we have the work of Steve Powers on our walls? Yes. Will we as a community grow into it? I don't know. You, the community, need to determine that. Is it a major coup that we have the first mural painted by a robot on our walls? Yes. Is it an image that generates community pride and a greater sense of identity among us? I don't know. You, the community, need to determine that. And while those are issues that I believe need to be addressed and discussed, 
What I feel is the best role for public art at this juncture is to provide the community with education. Education is empowerment about public art and engage in discussion about what is planned for the future. The April session will focus more specifically on who is recommended to be engaged as artis artists to create public art, as well as what the public art team hopes to put in place for this year. So this was the easy one. You know, we were looking back, oh, you know, uh, down, trip down memory lane, all of that was very nice. We'll be a lot more focused on what we hope to actually move forward with when we meet again in April. And this group, the group that was present here, this almost 50 of us, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with the number. Um, you will be getting the link to the video of this presentation, as well as um, the definite dates after our, the, the group's meeting on March 7th. Um, we will have determined the actual dates of when we will be meeting in those those um, upcoming biennial present or bi-monthly presentations. So thank you so much, and I'm going to turn this then over to Eric for the dialogue for the discussion. Thank you again.